This week we're back for the penultimate episode with artist extraordinaire Tradmore. We've previously spoken about Ghost Rider and Luther Strode, and this time we're discussing something a little different with his work on this heavily gridded page in Zero, written by Alice Cott and colours by Jordi Belair. Compared to his other work, this page and this book stand out as something a little bit different, so Trad and I delve into its composition, themes, panel choices, and working with the awesome Jordi Belair. You're watching Strip Panel Naked, I'm Hass, and I'm going to show you some of the cool stuff lurking in the pages of some of the best comics, this week with the help of Tradmore. I guess that sort of leads nicely onto the Zero page, because you go from something that's really free-flowing to something that's very, very, very structured. Because then you, now, you've got, right. now you've got the... 16, yeah. 16. We, we did a lot of different grids in this one. Mm -hmm. This is weird for you, <laughs> for the, rest, <laughs> yeah. the rest of your work, to have it so heavily formal, I guess, maybe. Right. Obviously, I presume this was an intention between you and Alice Cott. Was it weird <laughs> for you to work like that? Like I said, I like I like to challenge myself mm -hmm. with um, different issues to, you know, with each comic issue I do. To, you don't want to get so wrapped up in, you know, whatever your aesthetic is that you can't get your aesthetic across in different ways. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so... Speaking of working with different writers and whatnot, Alish with this issue, he had very specific ideas with, you know, wanting to play a lot with grids. So even sometimes when he wouldn't say exactly what was going on in detail on each panel, he would always like every page would start off with how many panels were on that page and whether or not it was a grid. And I think that most of the pages in this issue, or at least half of them, probably were, were based on a grid-type storytelling structure. And, you know, it's interesting because, yeah, usually I'm doing these big action book things. Uh, and this one is a it's a very... Down-to-earth is not the right word because it's about a quieter. spy. Yeah, it, quieter, yeah. And, and definitely, like, I mean, it's dealing with, with real, you know, quote-unquote real, uh, non-superpowered individuals. It's a mm -hmm. spy comic, you know what I mean? And so we wanted it to do something more, I guess, down-to-earth like this, where I'm trying to, to show a, a real world type thing. I think that uh, I really liked Alish's idea of, of sticking to this grid. And, you know, not many people do grid format in modern comics. You know what I mean? It used yeah. to be just how you did it. <laughs> yeah. um, but to, to do a modern comic like this was, in a way, exciting again, because it's just not what you typically see. And you definitely don't often see artwork as stylized as mine in something so traditionally structured as a grid. Well, a big thing for this page was acting. A lot of your a lot of your characters have very, very, very like clearly rendered features and expressions. Right. They say like got the the mother's face. Right. And then the and then the kid's face. Those are two clearly defined expressions. What's your process for getting that? I'm basically in the same way that with the action sequence, I'm kind of like picturing this in full motion. Mm -hmm. It's it's one of those things where I try to design every character design their faces and their body types and their clothing in a way to where you could theoretically want to read a whole comic about that character i want these characters to be interesting enough to where you could in theory want to read a comic just about this mom and her daughter and her son so that's why i try to put a lot of expression on characters even when they're maybe in the background or this or that because like honestly you don't have a lot of time with these characters as a as a reader but if but if the impact of basically this family's life being torn apart is going to connect. You need to be able to have these characters be relatable and, uh, and emote so that uh, when things go wrong, people go like, oh gosh, that sucks. I loved that little girl. You know, even though you only saw her in five panels, six yeah. panels. Also, I, I would just notice oftentimes what type of characters and what type of storytelling have characters that people really fall in love with. You know, I think of like uh, Disney's Robin Hood and mm -hmm. I think of some of the kids in Disney's Robin Hood and they're barely even in the movie, but like you just fall in love with them, like the, the little turtle kid and you know, all that stuff. And so, yeah, I try to do that with comics as well. When I get an opportunity to draw a conversation scene, I try to focus on facial expressions as much as I can because that's what people are going to fall in love with. Obviously, I keep mentioning about your head-on angles. And on this page, you do mix it up a little bit because you know, first panel on the second row, you've got this overhead bird's eye shot. And then you're also playing around with the kind of silhouettes in the third row as well. Was that just a necessity from the script? Was that something that was like directed to you? Or was, did you just feel the need to kind of get out of that framework? work for this. A kind of isometric room setup is something that I do pretty often just because I think it's important 
for viewers to to know where these things are taking place. And it's important for you to know also as a as the artist trying to tell the story of like how are these characters going to move through this space. So a lot of times, even just for my own benefit, I will do kind of like a uh, bird's eye type shot, typically in isometric perspective. That way I don't have to mess around with, uh, <laughs> with too many points of perspective to just basically show the room that they're in. I don't think Alish specifically said do a uh, bird's eye view, but, you know, it, it needed to be a establishing shot of the room. Mm-hmm. And playing with the silhouettes, you know, you're, you're seeing some of this through the family's perspective Mm -hmm. and you're seeing some of it through Zero, the main character who is in this home right now. And so he's basically just living in this home, living in the shadows and and stalking this family. We get these shots of of characters' faces and, you know, like I said, trying to give these big expressions and, you know, try to create these characters that you really care about from their perspective towards one another. But then when you see it from Zero's perspective, who this whole comic is, you know, about him basically being turned into a soldier and to feel nothing. So yeah, it kind of gave it like a whenever you see it from his perspective it's it's cold Mm -hmm. Um, and it's centered and far away feels very isolated and even when you see him very subtly in the background of the second to last panel you know again you have this family in this full color room but then dead center isolated in the shadows you have zero i think that there's a lot of strength in a good silhouette and (laughs) i think that uh it can make something look scary and imposing but I think more than that, it can make things look very sad. I tried to make him look isolated at all times. And that's why the, the final shot there is of the of the single Lego, because the family, they're playing with Legos and they have a whole set of Legos out on the floor and uh, they've built a car together. And, you know, you always see them with this whole set and then you see zero and then you see the little lone Lego all by himself. And Sorry, what, what, yeah, what is... <laughs> what is uh, what good is a lone Lego other than <laughs> to hurt your foot when you step on it? And there's one last thing I want to ask you about this. Com- again, compared to like the, a, a lot of your stuff that I've seen, you know, these are quite muted. Um, right. It's quite a sort of dampened palette. I guess you knew that going in, obviously, because you know what kind of the story you're telling. Exactly, yeah. So are you working towards knowing the fact that this is going to be kind of muted and, and, and dark? Yeah, and because uh, Jordy colored the whole series. Mm-hmm. So from a visual standpoint, each issue was drawn by different artists. Her colors were the, the visual connected tissue of of the whole series you know what i mean so yeah i I had seen all of issue one was already done Mm -hmm. so i knew what the look of the book was you know what i mean and i had never worked completely in flats before which i love but yeah it also works really well with with the silhouettes and the spot blacks and that kind of stuff yeah i definitely worked knowing what palette she was kind of going to be working with and and knowing that it was going to be flat it is amazing isn't it like how that can like quite like dramatically change the feel of the artwork oh absolutely yeah and it uh changes like i said in any good collaboration it's it's got to change the way you go about things because obviously you don't want this page in this book with this collaboration to feel at all similar to the uh, <laughs> the craziness of the first page we were looking at from ghost rider where there's yeah. just like panel borders getting broken all over the place <laughs> and slanted panel borders and this and that here is, you know, very straightforward, you know, grids, flat colors, muted tones. I, I think I used probably more, you know, like spot blacks and, and cast shadows and stuff in this than I had probably used before. So yeah, it was it was cool. I, you know, I loved working with everyone involved in this. I love I love Alish's work. I love Jordy's work. I love Tom's work. Working on Zero was was just really cool and a chance to do something different and I guess learn about what I'm capable of myself and uh, be able to show to readers that uh, I don't have to just do superhero stuff all the time. Uh, Sometimes I might want to go off and do something like this, you know. And that wraps up this episode. Next time Trad is on the show, we're going to be talking about a couple of pages from his run on All New Ghost Rider with Felipe Smith, and how sometimes deadlines can affect the way you end up telling the story. We also dive into Trad's love for adding more panels to pages, and how you go to that level of extreme in a battle scene that only he can. Thanks for watching. If you're a fan of Strip Panel Naked, please check out the Patreon and consider supporting. In return, there's tons of extra content and original research on there that you can't find anywhere else. For more comics talk and analysis, you can find me on Twitter at Hasanoe. And finally, hit subscribe to keep up to date with all the latest episodes and we'll see you next time.